Hello, uh, so today's going to be a quicker, more basic session because I only have about a half an hour. Um, so we're just going to try to finish up the Switch.js library and um, I might show you a little something else. Uh, and we might not finish the Switch.js library today. We might have to finish that up on a different day because we haven't even started testing it yet and usually that's, you know, what, what's going to take, you know, an extra like hour or two um, if not more, to you know, go through a lot of different um, configurations and and uh, you know um, you know situations to to make sure that the library is re really working well. Okay, so that being said, um, one thing I do want to show you real quick is uh, this thing I found today, um, which is uh, I put it in this folder. So this was the um, original widget.js. This is the syntax for the original widget.js, and this is all the code for it. So um, when I first started out, it was super, super simple. So all it was is you could have multiple widgets on the same page, but only one of each type. Um, so you couldn't have um, more than one widget being uh, triggered. and uh, whenever it was activated, it would just get this widget activated class. So this was the whole entire um, function for it. Uh, and actually, it, it started off even simpler than this, but this is one of the most useful versions. Um, so you can say, you can see that I'm using jQuery here. So it's dependent on jQuery because uh, it triggers some events using jQuery. And then it um, you know, adds or removes the class depending on if you triggered it or not. And that's actually kind of nice because that lets you use, um, you know, widget.js outside of the, um, outside of the library code. So you can actually trigger this event on this element and then, you know, it's going to uh, activate. And so you don't have to activate it through uh, the library itself. Um, and yeah, now that I think about that, that's something I definitely want to add to this version. Um, it'll be through the library because I'm not using jQuery and I don't think I'm going to use an event system, but I might actually um, because there's, a, there's custom events in JavaScript and those are pretty well supported. And if they're not supported in the browser um, that we want to use, um, like IE11, for example, we can have a polyfill for that. And we talked about that last time with um, polyfill.io, um, filling in a lot of um, things that Internet Explorer is missing. So yeah, I just wanted to show you this code real quick. It's very, very simple. Um, all it does is um, gets the event, sees if, uh, you know, if it's a, a trigger, if it's a trigger and, um, and it's allowed to trigger this ID, then it grabs the current widget using the trigger ID. Um, and if the action is activate, it activates it. If it's deactivate, it deactivates it. And if it's toggle, it toggles it based on the class that the widget has. And it, you know, always knows that the widget is activated or not because it has this widget activated. So it's a little bit limited because say you have like a component and you want to um, show more details on it and you also want to, um, in that more detail section, have a section that uh, shows even more details. Um, how I usually like to handle that is at the top level. So on the top of the component, the ultimate parent element is gonna have, you know, um, de more details activated and extra details activated. And the reason why is because I might want to style the entire widget differently or know about um, these widgets being activated or these switches being activated um, in different parts of that component and putting it at the top level, especially if it's, you know, something I know is just going to be one type of widget. That, that gives me a lot more flexibility. And um, yeah, I've found that over 
you know, over time, just putting it as high on the component as you can makes a lot of sense. But with this library, we couldn't do that because it's using the widget activated class. Um, and that's gonna just tell it, you know, yes or no, it's activated or not. And you don't know, so you can only have one widget attached to one element. So that's, that's a drawback of this. And with our new library, you can have as many uh, switches on the same element as you want and then you can toggle each of those on and off individually uh, which is really nice and really flexible and why it takes a lot more code but this code is pretty pretty nice so yeah it, it toggles it and everything and then afterwards it goes through all of the um, activated widgets and um, you know make sure it's not the current widget and then it you know, deactivates it. So this is our um, this is our auto deactivate code for the original uh, widget uh, library. So this is pretty cool. I might actually, maybe you know, maybe I'll release this too. It has a lot of um, uh, documentation for such a simple library, um, but you can see this is basically what it does. This is this plugin makes it really easy to add and remove a widget activated class. Um, I should say, from an element when another element is clicked. And that's basically what it does. And you can create multiple widgets with this. You, each one can have an activated and deactivated using simple rules. Um, activated widgets have the class of widget activated and by default clicking elsewhere on the page will deactivate currently activated widgets. Um, yeah. And the only way to prevent that automatic closing is using this uh, JS widget trigger, I think, uh, in this version. Okay, cool. So we're going to close this for now, and we're going to go back to our code, which we still aren't sure if it's even <laughs> doing anything or working. But, um, but I'm pretty sure, you know, I'm not just typing no nonsense. So we're going to go down to the turn on, and we wrote out these comments before that are going to help us write the code now. So let's just go through them real quick and make sure they make sense. So when we turn on a switch, we want to get the attribute um, data switched on and save it. Then we want to add the switch name to this attribute string after a space. And then we want to add the custom name to this attribute string after a space. And with turn off, we want to get the attribute um, and save it. We want to remove the switch name from this attribute string. We want to remove the custom name from this attribute string. And we want to remove the attribute entirely if there are no active switches. Um, okay, so that sounds pretty good. One thing I have learned from React, I haven't used it very much, but I have built a simple application using React. And the really nice thing about it and other front-end libraries like Knockout.js or Vue.js, uh, which I've also used, is that they have the data separate from the DOM, and the data is what controls how the, how the DOM is responding. And working with the data separately is so much nicer than working with the DOM directly because with the DOM, you know, for like, if you get like, um, like a uh, uh, attribute from the DOM, it's going to have spaces in it. It's going to have, you know, maybe some weird syntax in it to try to get it to represent an object. You know, which is a lot of what we're doing in the switch library. Um, and then you're going to have to kind of mangle that and get it into a form that you like working with. And sometimes it's worth it. Sometimes it's not. In my opinion, obviously, with this library, I think it's worth it to kind of you know, put some pretty advanced syntax into a data attribute to give us some simple functionality kind of built into the DOM. So I think that's worth it in this case. But for this particular function, what I think instead of what we, instead of getting the attribute, I think what we want to do is have, uh, use our like standard parsing function to get the, um, the turned on um, switches, the switches that are turned on, and then, um, and then uh, add our new switches, or our, sorry, our new switch in this example, to that. 
Um, yeah. So, okay, basically think about it that, like this. So if we have like an attribute where it's like A, B, and C, and we want to add, uh, and so this, this stands for like the, the switches that are on. So we'll just say like on equals that, right? And we want to add um, a switch that's called D. Instead of um, saying, okay, well, let's get the on attribute, and that's A, B, C, oh, sorry. And then let's add a string with a space before it, and then D. Oh, so we'd probably do something like this, um, right? Because we'd probably have this D assigned to a variable, right? So it'd be like, you know, new. Pretend this is not a reserved word. Um, and then we'd have new. Um, <coughs> so, um, yeah. So that's probably along the lines of, you know, something we could do. But instead of doing that, let's just get the... Um, so from the attribute, so say we have the attribute, let's um, get current switches uh, from the attribute. And this is going to pump out something like A, uh, B, C. And because this is an array and, you know, um, and we, we've like parsed it effectively and we're we're confident in our parser. We know this isn't going to have any extra spaces in it. We know how to work with arrays in JavaScript. They're super easy to work with. Arrays all have a lot of helper functions built into them. So this is an example of where we might want to work with the data, the kind of like, um, you know, what do you call it, uh, object model, um, instead of uh, the, the string directly. So we get the current switches, and then we have, we like, um, you know, have a way of passing in the new switch, right? And then we would say, um, you know, new switch attribute uh, equals get current switches. And we probably wouldn't put this all in one line, but it'd be something like this, join with a space in between them, and then, uh, and then plus, Empty, empty space and plus uh, new switch. Um, yeah, so it's kind of the same thing, right? Um, I'm just trying to think if there's a better way of doing that that's like closer to just working with the data. Like maybe we would have another function. Uh, I'm just kind of spitballing here, but like maybe we would have a uh, so like set attribute, and we'd pass in the element, and then we'd pass in like uh, data switched on, and then we'd have um, like an array. <sighs> array of objects. Yeah, so that would be nice. And then the array of objects could look yeah, it's just, it's complicated. So I don't know. I don't know what we're going to end up doing. To be honest, my like <laughs> grandstanding about like using a separate object model kind of feels silly here because we're, we're pretty much doing the same thing. We are, uh, with this, we are ensuring, I think that the, the data, the string stays more standardized because we're, you know, with the parser, we're going to strip everything out. So that's good. And then we're making sure we're only adding one space here. So that's like kind of pro programmatic and good. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't feel amazing though. Okay, but um, let's, let's do this. So switch is going to come in with the name, the um, element. So what is this element going to be? Is it, this is going to be the switch element and we're parsing the switch attributes. So name, auto, and custom name. So this is, um, this is the actual switch element. And this is, yeah, and we just want to turn it on, right? 
Um, and we, so we don't need to do anything with on, right? Because um, this object isn't going anywhere after turn on. I guess I could mess with um, with mess with this object if it's if it was going to return anything, but it's not going to. So I don't need to do anything with this. Um, I'm almost tempted to kind of delete this for now, just so I don't have to think about it, um, even though it's there. Um, I don't know. Maybe um, I'll just put that there, just to like remind myself. But this is what I need to focus on. So we have the name of the uh, of the switch, and we have the element, and we have the custom name, and we have whether it's auto or not. And I want to see. We're not worrying about auto yet because that's going to come up in auto deactivate activated switches. So we don't need to worry about auto either. Um, so yeah, so let's get the um, activated or uh, turned on switches. Um, and let's bring up, and it's going to be parse something, right? Parse something. So I just want to bring up my list here uh, with a final set. So it's called data dash switched on. That's the attribute we're going to be looking for. So I think it uh, makes sense to call this um, maybe like switched on switches um, could just be like on switches um, currently on switches I don't know currently on switches I'm fine with that okay so and remember, none of this is final. If you think if a better name comes to you later, you can always change it. Um, OK, so let's go into here. We have the make parse function. Um, so we could use um, one of these, um, but they're not meant for parsing the, um, the switch on attribute. So why don't we make a new one? Okay. And we're going to say parse switched on attributes make parse function and it's just going to be name because all this is is going to be a space separated list of uh, switch names and um, you know while I'm at it what I'm thinking about is this this um, so like what has kind of like stuck with me as I've been building this is that I um, am not uh, so sorry, 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 sorry. So I got distracted. So I'm not really handling the uh, stopped switches very well. So if you, if we look at get actions data, I think this is where we do it. We parse the switch action attributes and these could be so if we look here these could be um, actions or stops hmm. yeah so sorry I got a little distracted but I you know this is okay I just want to like look through this and see if there's a better way of, of quickly doing this. So when I'm getting the actions data, can I quickly tell whether this action element is, um, and I kind of want to call it like an element with action, um, but let's leave it like that for now. So is there a way to quickly tell that this has, that this is a stop instead of an action? Um, there's not 
Um, I mean, so I could just call like matches on it, like dot matches and see if it matches this or this, um, and then just parse it uh, differently. Um, yeah, because I just, I don't like that I'm parsing the switch actions the same as the stop actions, the, the, as the stop attributes, because they have a different syntax, and even though they overlap, um, I, I just, yeah, it just feels like it's something that's going to confuse me later, and it's better just to do it. Right. So one thing I could do is have an argument go into get parents that would say no, that wouldn't make sense because it's matching on this whole selector. So the other option is just to match on this for every action element. Let's see. Um, I'm pretty sure that's probably like super fast, right? But let's see. Um, matches. So this is never, I feel a little disingenuous during this test because this is never with like a DOM function ever going to return something higher than like two milliseconds, right? So, because it's a single action and yeah, even two milliseconds is super high. So this is like 0.49. What you really want to know is like if you're going to do this, you know, uh, 50 times, you know, is is it gonna is it gonna take a long time? But we can see like even if we did this, um, you know, a hundred a hundred times, it's still only gonna take four milliseconds, and it might not even take that long because um, you know with a single action it tends to be a little bit higher. I think <laughs> you know I don't know these things, I really don't. So um, let's see. I don't know. I mean, I think it's probably fine. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to say matches and then this uh, and I'm going to say, you know, if that matches Um, and we're going to replace this, um, this parser up here. And again, that doesn't really matter. But it's kind of nice um, to just have that be separate. Okay. And so this one is going to just return the name. So now we have these two. Um, I can close this. Let's go to the top. Let's put these on, on new lines. And then the 
let's replace uh, this one. Oh, did I already? I already did that. Okay, cool. Okay, and now we're going to parse the switched on attributes for switch dot ln. Okay, so then we're going to get something uh, back. Um, I can bring this, or I don't know. Okay, so we're going to get something back like like that. Um, and I think I'm being really stupid right now. Um, I'm being incredibly stupid right now. Okay, so uh, yeah, so let's get all of our parse functions. Where are they? Uh, so they're all called like parse switch something. And I'm calling them all on uh, elements. And this parse function has no idea what to do with an element because it needs to be called on on a string. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do, I so I really like um, just being able to use the parse function without getting the attribute, so I think I'm going to make the, the parse function um, accept um, accept something else. Okay, so let's see. So when I make the parse function, that's fine. But I want this parse switch attributes. I want this to accept a an element and the name of the attribute. Okay. Um, yeah, Na the like, yeah, the name of the attribute. Okay, instead of an attribute string. Instead of an attribute string, really? Um, I mean, it makes my test harder, right? Because then I have to make elements in here in order to test this stuff out. Um, but that's fine. I don't need to, I don't need to have those right now. Um, uh, let's see. To do, add, test back. Woohoo! Okay, uh, create elements for parse functions. First. Okay, uh, first functions, yeah, okay, that'll, that'll be enough of a guide for me. Okay, so we have the attribute, let's see, attribute name, and we're going to have the element, and we get the attribute string very simply by doing this, ln get attribute and attribute name, and I just want to attribute element. Is there a better name for this? Um, attribute property. I think it's just kind of like the attribute name. But let's see what it's called. I mean, it's pretty much just called um, the attributes, right? But no, this is not what I wanted.
Okay, so the syntax is simple. Any attribute on an element whose attribute name attribute name starts with data. Yeah, okay. Um, sorry, I was being a little obtuse there. Okay, so we're going to do lm get attribute attribute name, and then that should give us, give us the attribute string, and that should be, that should work. Um, so the nice thing about catching bugs like this, if there is a nice thing about it, is that um, I didn't have to go through debugging it because I haven't actually tried out the, the code yet. Um, okay. Um, and I mean, the nice thing about that is is that um, is that a lot of the time it, it takes a lot of uh, time to debug something if you're if you're um, not sure what's what's going on like if you don't have a good idea of the flow of the program in your um, in your head and I think that writing it all out ahead of time and kind of like planning it step by step can give you a little bit better of an idea I don't know I mean I think that's what just happened right because this yeah okay anyways switch attributes so this is going to be called um, am I being, st <laughs> being stupid again no I, I called that data that okay so this is going to be data switches and I should probably be using like global constants for this but I'm not I'm not going to okay so um, data this is called data dash uh, switched on okay okay um, switches turned no <laughs> whatever currently on switches okay um, currently on switches and then the next thing we're going to so now we have a list of objects with names and we're going to add the switch name to this attribute string okay add the name the switch name add the new switch name so we're going to say you know what I'm just gonna call this switches because then we can do this push name um, switches and let's do what switch names equals switches map um, and we're gonna do switch. Um, so yeah, I'm curious about this. What happens? I think I can just use switch in here, and this is gonna override this switch, and it's not gonna affect the outer scope at all. But I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. This is something I should know after years and years of JavaScript programming, but I've always just done this. I just like rename it. But okay, let me just, yeah, I don't know. I mean, does it matter? If I test it, you know, but I'll just do switch object name. Okay, so now we got the switch names and now we're gonna push in switch name And then add uh, add a new switch name to the parsed switch names. Okay, and now we're gonna add uh, 
add the new switch name and custom name, right? Um, because this and I think push accepts multiple arguments. I usually just use one, so sorry I don't know this. Yeah, you can use multiple arguments. Um, so we'll do um, switch dot custom name, but it might not have a custom name. Um, so. I wish there was a way of ignoring one if you wanted. Um, so we're not going to do that that way. We're just going to say if switch names push custom name. Okay. And now we're going to say like add. Uh, or like replace old attribute values with new ones. And I gotta go. So um, this is the last thing I'm gonna do. Switch element set attribute. And this is um, exactly where I wish I had the uh, globals, the global constants, because then I could just use this again, and I would be sure it was the same one for all time. And I'm going to do uh, switch names, join with a space. And that's how you turn it on. Okay, I got to go. Thank you for watching, um, and I Join me next time for the turn off function and just test this out and see if it all works. Okay, see you later.